The lovely What's the Europe sent me the brand spanking new Commander 2019 decks for free to share with you on the channel. And today I'll be busting open the Mystic Intellect deck and seeing what treats it contains. Alright there, how's it going? I'm Tim here at Digital Llama. Cheers for tuning in. So let's have a cheeky butchers at what's inside this lovely package. We get an oversized Savine, the Chronoclasm card. If you're playing Savine, would you use this to represent your commander on the table? We've also got the usual folded up bit of paper giving you some details and stuff. The deck box feels a bit superfluous in my opinion, but you can hold a fair few dice in it I guess. And finally, we have the deck itself, so let's claw this wrapper off and get into the details. So starting out where we always do, with the new commanders, we've got Savine, the Chronoclasm, up first. So prevent all damage that will be dealt to Savine, and whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery from your graveyard each turn, copy it and you can choose new targets. So we want lots of graveyard based spells that we can replay. So the deck has quite a few of them packed in of all different varieties. There's Jump Start, there's other ones that I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But yeah, it's a really fun mechanic and yeah, you can do it on other people's turns as well. So it's not just on your turn. So that's something to take advantage of. Elsha of the Infinite, the Djinn Monk with Prowess. So you can look at the top card of your library at any time, and you can cast the top card of your library if it's a non-creature, non-land card, and it has flash as well, so enchantments, artifacts, instants and sorceries, obs, and seems like it's going to be an awful lot of fun. So that is something that I'm looking forward to building around. Pramicon, Sky Rampart, so a 1-5 wall, and you choose left or right and each player may attack only the nearest opponent in the chosen direction and planeswalkers controlled by that opponent. This to me suggests that you want to go full aggro because you're only going to be taking damage from one person and you can only deal damage to one person. It eliminates a whole amount of the multiplayer politics involved. So you can just focus on killing that one player as fast as possible whilst keeping yourself alive and then just repeat until you've worked your way around the table. So as people will have effects that say affect everyone, you might want to load up on a bit more targeted removal and that kind of thing and go that way. Just a thought. We also get some other legendary creatures printed in here. Two reprints and one brand new one. And if you've seen any of my commander videos, then you'll know I absolutely love Gerard, Weatherlight Hero. The art from Zach Stella, absolutely stunning. And it's such an interesting card to build around. I'm loving the boss get some fun, fun commanders recently. So I'm still working on what way that I want to build this. But yeah, the fact that Dimensions creatures and artifacts returning from the graveyard, I'm thinking that I want to build some kind of artifact based boss deck. The reprinted commanders, Talrand and Zatalpa, are in here as well. Zatalpa, probably not going to be anyone's commander. Talrand is a really interesting choice to put in and yeah really plays on the casting of instants and sorceries to build up your drake army so none of these can be the commander of this 99 but you can certainly pick parts out of it to build around them if you wanted to so a couple of the new cards in the deck that i'm really excited about dockside extortionist now this card is nuts so you get x treasure tokens where x is the number of artifacts and enchantments your opponents control so you could just let that naturally happen or you could try and swing things a little bit cards like mycosynth lattice obviously turn everything into an artifact so you're going to get a huge amount of treasure and then that way your revel in riches win is just going to be instant awful lot of fun loving that card Savine's Reclamation is designed, as you'd guess from the name, specifically for Savine. So it's a sorcery for three mana. You get to return a target permanent card with CMC three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. If this spell was cast from a graveyard, you can copy this spell and choose a new target for the copy and it's got flashback. So if you cast this from your graveyard, then you get to bring back two things. And if it's the first one that you're 
flashing back this turn, then Savine also doubles it. So you get many instances of this coming back. So that's definitely going to be worth looking at. Every commander deck this year gets a Planeswalker reprint, and this one is Ral Zerek. So we get to tap target permanent and untap something else. Or the same thing if you really wanted to, I guess. We can deal 3 damage to any target or flip loads of coins and take an extra turn for each coin that came up heads. So it's a really cool reprint. I'm not sure that it has 100% synergy really with the deck. Tapping things down, untapping them doesn't really speak spell slinger to me, but it is a really cool card, don't get me wrong. In terms of other reprints, we've got a few notable ones. We get a reprint of Sun Titan in here, so we get even more recursion of CMC 3 or less to the battlefield. We get a reprint of Faithless Looting, which was a big draw for the deck, I guess. However, it's now been banned in modern, so yeah, slightly less exciting. Still a cool card, obviously, so yeah. Nice little include and they obviously couldn't have known that they were going to ban it that far ahead when they were deciding the deck lists. We get a ghostly prison in here as well, I absolutely love this card, shutting down attacks is something that I try to do quite a lot in my decks, either through this or the other one which counts the number of enchantments that you've got. That's name escapes me at the moment, but you know what I'm talking about. So there's some great reprints in here. There's also some less great reprints, unfortunately, and this seems to be a theme through all of this year's decks, where cards that are currently in standard, or slightly just about to rotate, get reprinted. Now these cards could be used to reprint other cards that would instantly synergize and make the decks better. I can understand them reprinting Chemist's Insight in here because they want to show that Jumpstart works with Savine wonderfully. But Gutter Snipe, mm, maybe Crackling Drake. These cards can be picked up for pennies and they're taking up valuable sort of reprint estate, I feel. The other reprints that I take slight umbrage with. I'm not angry or anything, don't get me wrong, I'm not an angry person. But the lockets being printed in here instead of signets. I just feel that signets would be a much nicer include in Commander. Yes, lockets are alright, but signets are better. And signets have been reprinted many times before, so why now are we choosing to put lockets in the deck? So with that off my chest, and hope that wasn't too ranty, it's no biggie really, you can just flip those cards out for what you want to put in. Let's have a look through the best of the rest. So we've got great new cards, we've got some reprints in here. Fact or Fiction has been reprinted, always nice to have more copies of that. Una's Grace is a pretty cool reprint, art on it from Rebecca Gay, stunning as always. Mandate of Peace is quite an interesting combat trick. Zero and white for an instant, you can cast this spell only during combat. Your opponents can't cast spells this turn and you end the combat phase. So all attackers and blockers cease to be attacking and blocking and all spells on the stack, including this one, get exiled. So yeah, it's quite a little trick, still yet to think about where to put it into. Wall of Stolen Identity is another really cool card. So as it ETBs, it becomes a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it's still a wall. And then it taps down the creature that you've copied, so it is a double slap in the face to be fair. Pristine Angel, a card that has got absolutely amazing art, Scott M. Fisher. Now this guy knows how to paint a magic card. And if you're interested in seeing me wax lyrical about his artwork, then you can check out this video that's linked up in the top right hand corner. Into the mana base and we get some rare reprints. We've got Prairie Stream and Exotic Orchard in here. The inclusion of Prairie Stream is pretty cool. It's one of those lands that could come into play tapped or untapped, but at least it's better than a card just flat out stating that it enters the battlefield tapped like Boris Garrison or Guildgates. So flicking through the non-basics, we get a lot of Enter the Battlefield tapped cards. So this is going to be one area where you can make an instant improvement to the deck. Not saying that you have to run shock lands or original jewel lands or anything like that, and there's no way that everyone can afford to splash out on fetch lands. But certainly some tweaks here and there will really smooth things out for you and open up access to your mana earlier. 
we get some really nice reprinted art on the basic lands. Basic lands are something that I absolutely love looking at. I love theming my basic lands to the decks and Commander often reprints some really, really nice ones. The Alana Dana basics from the recent standard showdown, I believe it was, absolutely stunning in foil. They look just as good in non-foil and now you can use them without worrying that they're gonna start curling. If you're interested in learning more about my love for basic lands, then I've linked a playlist up in the top right hand corner with some of the videos I've made about basic lands so far. And then to finish us off, giggity, we get the token section and these tokens look absolutely amazing in their semi full artness. It won't take much, uh, I do card alters on the side, uh, don't know if any of you are aware, if you're not check out my Instagram for some photos and stuff like that. But yeah these cards are stunning and it won't take much work to take off the rest of that black border and they're double sided as well so it saves the amount of space in your deck box that you need when you're taking Savine down to your LGS to play. So yeah win win situation with these, they are fantastic. So that's the Mystic Intellect deck unboxed. Even though I'm not much of a spell slinger kind of deck builder, there's definitely parts of this deck I'm really hyped for. I'd love to hear your plans for this deck or any of them at all down in the comments or over on my Discord, which patrons like these lovely folks get access to. I couldn't make these videos without their support. I appreciate all of you. If you'd like to see some Commander deck techs, there's a playlist of them right here. Or for something different, why not check out this video? And before I disappear, don't forget to subscribe and do all the usual YouTube business. I release new videos every Monday and Thursday, so I'll catch you all on the next one. Cheers!